When a flood damages a home or business, the first thought may be to repair or rebuild the way it was before. But before you do, you should consider what you can do as you rebuild to reduce the risk of being flooded next time. And if your building is substantially or repetitively damaged, you will be required to build to the community's current building standards, which may be stricter than when it was originally built. This could result in increased costs to ensure it is built in compliance. Flood insurance policies from the National Flood Insurance Program, or NFIP, offer a way to help with that additional cost when it is required. An NFIP policy not only helps with the repair costs, it also provides additional coverage called Increased Cost of Compliance, or ICC coverage. It helps qualifying policyholders after a flood to meet the costs of rebuilding to certain stricter local building standards, which were put in place after the structure was initially built or substantially improved. An ICC payment of up to $30,000 can be used to help relocate a building, elevate it, demolish it, or for a non-residential building, floodproof it, or any combination of these mitigation activities. Not every flooded building is eligible for ICC. To be eligible, you must have an NFIP standard policy. Your building must be in a high-risk area, shown as a special flood hazard area on a FEMA flood map, and it must have been declared substantially or repetitively damaged by flooding. To obtain the ICC benefits, policyholders and communities need to follow certain steps. Let's walk through an example scenario. You've been flooded. The first thing is to report the flood loss. The insurance company will assign a claims adjuster who will inspect the damage and establish a claim. During the process, the adjuster will let you know if the flood damages appear extensive enough to qualify for ICC, and if so, will suggest you talk to the community building department. The building department will inspect the property to determine if it was substantially damaged by flooding and discuss mitigation options. The building department will explain to you what your options are, what permits are needed, and if there are any federal or state grants to help with the cost. They'll also provide a substantial damage determination letter to give to your insurance company. Once you send the letter to your insurance company, they'll set up a file to claim your ICC benefit. They'll assign an adjuster who specializes in ICC coverage to verify the information and make sure the community has the appropriate provisions in their ordinance. To complete your paperwork, you'll need an itemized, signed contract for the work, your proposed start-finish dates, a building permit, an assigned ICC proof of loss form. And you may want to ask your insurance company if you can get a partial payment up front to help with initial construction costs. However, they may require the work be completed prior to issuing an ICC payment. Once the work is completed, the community will inspect the property and issue a Certification of Occupancy or Compliance document, if required. Submit this and all other required information, such as an elevation certificate, to the insurance company for their review of the payment. Then a check for the ICC claim amount will be sent to you. So you can see that ICC takes a collaborative effort where the policyholder, insurance company, adjuster, and the community play important roles. Let's review. The property owner reports the loss to the insurance company, then meets with the community official and obtains the necessary paperwork, especially the substantial or repetitive damage letter, which is then provided to the insurance company. Once approved, the rebuilding starts and on completion receives documentation from the community and sends in onto the insurance company and then awaits to receive the ICC payment. The insurance company and adjuster play an important role, including after being assigned the loss, the adjuster from the insurance company initially estimates the flood damage, assesses ICC eligibility, and submits it to the insurance company. The insurance company sets up an ICC file as part of the overall claim file and assigns a new adjuster for the ICC part of the overall claim. The insurance company may also provide a partial payment up front to financially help start the project. Once the project is complete, they will review the submitted paperwork and when all is in place, issue the final ICC claims check. The floodplain manager or building official role in the process is to determine that the building is substantially or repetitively damaged, suggest mitigation options and the use of any grants, if available. They will issue the permit and then inspect the property once work is complete and issue the proper final documentation, which the policyholder will include in submitting to the insurance company. That's the process. 
And with the help of ICC, future flood risks and flood insurance costs are reduced for you and the community. For more information about ICC, visit www.fema.gov slash increased dash cost dash compliance dash coverage.